These 7 Lightroom tips will help you to transform your images from ordinary to stunning in no time. In this first tip, I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful dreamy look in your images with the luminance range. I've got Lightroom open right now and this is a shot of my wife taking a picture of the scenery. And the easiest way to get a dreamy look is by decreasing the overall clarity. But as you can see, it affects the blacks and we don't want that. So we are using the luminance range. Go to masks, range, luminance range and then here I don't want to select the blacks or the shadows, so I'm dialing it in more towards the whites. You can click show luminance so it's easier to see. As you can see the edges are, if I zoom in, the edges are pretty sharp and noisy, pixely. But for that we can use the fall off so it fades in more, so we'll get a cleaner look. And now we just have to decrease the clarity. And as you can see, it only affects the brightest parts of the image. Here's the before and after. We can do the same in this image here. So go to the masks, range, luminance range. Do the exact same, show luminance map, decrease the clarity, the texture as well, why not? Up the exposure a bit and we play with the temp, tint, hues and saturation. So I'm gonna saturate it a bit more to get the orange and blues out a bit. I'm gonna play with the hues to get a more teal and orange type of vibe. Play with the temps just a tiny bit to the right, to the warmer side and before and after. This is such an easy and effective way. This tip helped me immensely with not losing my mind while editing, the solo mode. Okay, let's say I've created an insane edit using the color grading, the color mixer, details, everything. And now I just wanna go back to the basics or to the tone curve. So instead of scrolling up to search for the tone curve, I can easily right click on the tone curve or on the basics, it doesn't matter, right click and click on solo mode. And now what this does is, Everything closes instead of basics or I can scroll down. Oh, the tone curve is right here. Bro, I can just tap on it. Boom, tone curve opens and basic will close. So I'm not confused anymore and have to look for color mix, a tone curve or whatever. I can see it, click on it, everything else closes. Easy as that. In this tip, I'll show you how to create contrast in a more effective and controlled way. So you don't have to use the boring contrast slider, the tone curve. On this image, I'm gonna show you how to use the tone curve. But first, I'm gonna show you what the contrast slider does. Of course, introducing some contrast. But what if I'm gonna fade out the blacks? I have to go to the black slider, up them. Uh, decrease the highlights maybe. I don't like to use the sliders that much. So I'm gonna double tap on tone, reset everything. I don't have to close basics, just tap on tone curve because the solo mode. Tapping on tone curve. I'm not a technician or so, but I can tell you that this point here is the blacks. This here are the shadows. Here are the midtones, the highlights and the whites. That's all you need to know for the tone curve for now. I'm double tapping on the adjust, so I have no points here. So if you want the point to be exactly on the line, hold down Alt on your keyboard, press here for example, or here and here. And for us to create some contrast, we just have to down the shadows here, leave the midtones where they are for now, up the highlights. And now I'm, I want some faded blacks, just like I told you on the contrast slider. This is my black slider, if you want, so I'm upping it a bit, down the shadows a bit more. Now I'm playing with the midtones, uh, maybe up to create more highlights. And then for a better highlight roll off, I'm grabbing this point just like for the blacks, not up but down. Before, after, before, after. Beautiful contrast here. Now I've created some contrast on this image, but I want a dreamy look as well, so let's do it real quick. Mask, range, luminance range, down the clarity, play with the temp a bit and the tint. Beautiful dreamy look, before and after. I love this image so much. Okay, on to the next tip. In this tip, I'll show you a cool function in the spot removal tool, which I have never noticed for whatever reason. So if you have a dirty lens, and I don't blame you on that, there's an easy way to remove dirt spots with this tool here. 
So the reason why I'm not blaming you for having a dirty lens, my lenses are dirty as well. So this is the shot from the last YouTube video I did. I'm going to the spot removal tool because here I see a black dot. Spot removal tool is here. I'm clicking on the band-aid, scroll reel up or down to play with the size. I'm clicking on it, boom, it's gone, is it? It is gone. But what if I'm unsure if I really got every single uh, dirt spot here on the lens? I can go to the spot removal tool and click on visualize spots and now look at this one here. Bam! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have so many black dots, so I'm just gonna click on them all. Bam, bam. Um, you can play with the slider, but that's all the dirt spots for real. I'm gonna hide the visual spots now and a clean image. Now I could use my presets and start editing. Okay, on to the next one. If you are bored of always looking at your histogram for your desired exposure, then this tip will make your editing process way more fun. So let's say I don't know where the histogram is or I have it just closed. How do I know if, it, if the whites are peaking, the blacks are crushed? I know an option. I can just hold down Alt, our magic button, play with the exposure slider and see what happens. Everything that's blown out will be shown red, yellow and then white. If I'm not mistaken, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So if I release Alt key, this is what my image looks like. So let's go back and I'm releasing Alt key. Nothing should be overexposed. Now I don't see any dot or so. Perfect. So what's up with the blacks? Because I'm using Alt and pulling down the exposure slider, nothing happens. Hmm. Now I have to look at my histogram and know, or I have to know beforehand while I'm editing, that I think in the tone curve, let's go to the tone curve, I'm resetting the exposure, let's go to the tone curve, I have used a faded blacks technique. I can never go below this point here. So now I'm gonna reset this point here and now look at my histogram, boom, I have all my blacks back again. Now I'm going to my basics, holding down Alt, playing with the exposure or the blacks for example, now I can see my crushed blacks, as you can see, on cyan, blue, and then all the way black. So I don't want anything to be visible, so I'm going up, nothing is um, crushed here. But of course, you can edit the way you want, because it's your image and you can decide how it should look. On to the next tip. Now this tip is my all-time favorite and you will see it in almost every image of mine. If you have watched my recent YouTube video, you will have noticed that I'm always using them in my images. Gradients and masks. So if you haven't watched my recent YouTube video, don't worry. I have prepared something here on this image. And in the masks, I have already selected the building and the sky because I need to use the building and the sky for two linear gradients. I'm going to the building that I've selected, right click, intersect mask with linear gradient. I'm placing the linear gradient here. I'm pulling down the exposure. Now I'm going to my selected sky, right click on it. Again, linear gradient. And I'm pulling down the exposure again. And you can already see the difference. Mila, mach bitte nicht, Bruder, ich bin hier. You can even, let's say I want to add one more, okay? Let's add one more here. Okay, I have added one more here. I'm upping the whites for the building. Now I have to go to this mask here, pull down the exposure again. And now a before and after. Such a difference. That's why I love to use masks in my images. It looks surreal, but beautiful. On to the next tip. Okay, so let's say you have a folder with over 100 images. You have to go through every image and sort them out one by one by deleting the unwanted images. But what if you're unsure with some images or you forgot why you wanted to edit them in the first place? This tip will help you with just that. Okay, right now I have imported a folder with 117 images here. Mila, I have to record. Just give me a minute. 
Okay, so I have imported a folder with 117 images. So I'm going through them with my arrow keys right and left. So if I see an image that I want to for sure post on my Instagram, I can star it. So I can use the number one to five to star it. One, meh, five, yeah. So for example, I want this image here to edit for an Instagram post. I'm pressing number five and I'm going through again. I want this image here as well in my post, number five. And now this image, I don't want to post it in my feed, but post it in my story. So for that, I can flag it. And to flag images, you can press P. Boom, flag as pick. I'm scrolling through, let's say this image here or this one. Ah, only story. Okay, hit P. Boom. And now I have gone through all my 117 images and now I'm going to the develop page here where I edit my images and in the bottom right corner it says filters off. Now I can filter my images. Click on it, you know, flag or rate it, the star ratings. Right now I'm in a mood to only post a story. So I'm going to my flagged ones, click on it and instead of having 117 images I have two out of 117. So I can just edit it post it on my story and on the next day i know i want to have something in my feed go back to the sorting tab here click on rated boom here are my images that i want to have in my feed if at least one of my tips were helpful for you then i can count this video as a success if you already knew every tip i just mentioned then respect to you for having an already advanced skill set thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next week